Action. Action. All right. So, Rob Beezer, I think everybody knows who I am by this point. So. You have to tell an anecdote about yourself. Yes. I already did. Yeah. <laughs> tell it again. Uh, this is going to be a very technical presentation. If, if it feels like it's going over your head, it probably is. Uh, I am going to yeah, talk about converting a lot of text into worksheets. So when I, when I start demonstrating stuff, if you want to pay attention when the source code goes up, that might be of interest to you. Then you can go check your email. And when I have an end product coming out the other end, you might want to perk up and take a look. So I'm going to do a little bit of just sort of standard Beamer here and, and talk a little bit about what I've been up to. It's important to understand what I'm trying to do, and that's book length, material, although it will work with sort of one-off, short, short little worksheets or presentations. And I want to take the existing LaTeX. So lots of things are available, open source, and people that are going to start writing books tomorrow, good chance they're going to start writing in LaTeX. So that might not be what I would start with tomorrow, but there's going to continue to be people authoring things in LaTeX. In terms of content, and I have a year-long sabbatical, and a big part of what I'm doing on my sabbatical, and a big part of what I'm doing as part of this NSF grant, is to put SAGE instruction into a book. And of course, I want to teach how to do SAGE. I want to teach how to use SAGE to understand the mathematics. And, and sometimes there's even good opportunities to take the mathematics and talk about how SAGE is written, or the algorithms, or different things of that sort. So a, a two-way street, I think of it. Uh, just technically, I'd like these worksheets to look as good as a printed book, and that's where JS Math and MathJax come in, and that was part of my original mo motivation. Very early in SAGE, I was already converting my open source linear algebra textbook to JS Math, and once I figured out that that's what was being used by worksheets, at some point the light bulb went off, and that was maybe two, two and a half years ago, and I've sort of been beating away at this ever since. So I'm thinking of textbooks now as being, of course, worksheets and, and being on the screen. It's not so much that they're on the screen, but they're, as you read along as a student, there's a cell that you can execute. And maybe it doesn't interact, and, and you, you learn something from that interactivity. Maybe it's just some sage commands, and you see what they do. But you can edit those commands. You can open up a new cell. You can experiment. You can also use the, the tiny MCE editor to dump notes in your book, if that's what you want to do. So you can, you can customize your book in that way, which I know some commercial publishers are trying to do now, but again, that's a little harder when you're not open source or open content. Uh, so this is just going to be a, a quick overview of what I'm going to do, actually do for you and, and bouncing from editors and, and command lines and all that. Start with uh, standard LaTeX. One thing you want to realize is you're now basically building web pages not a printed page. So that takes a little bit of an adjustment. And of course, LaTeX was never meant to do that in the first place. So when you say standard, for example, they can't be in Beamer slides? No, I, that would, yeah. I'm not sure what, yeah, I'm not sure what that would do with what I've got. And a million esoteric packages on CTAN are out of the window too, probably. No, that's not oh, the case. Never mind, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be more clear about it. I'm gonna sort of redo all these slides over again as we get a little more depth. Uh, I've looked, and I'll, and I'll give you a list, I've looked at a lot of other people's tech and, uh, and that have written book-length things, and it's usually fairly easy to get them cleaned up and working. The main conversion tool is this program tech for ht It's been around for quite a while. Uh, it's a rather complicated system. It's, it's kind of archaic, but uh, it, it converts lot tech to lots and lots of different things. So mostly what, what the conversion that we're doing is to structured web pages, so that's what the X means, it's legitimate XML, there's a little bit of structure to the HTML, that, that the HTML, that the browsers, the browsers will let HTML be sort of poorly formed. This output is a little bit better than that. And then there's a JS math mode to tech for HT, so uh, we're spitting that, the mathematics out is something that JS math can deal with. The big deal about Tech for HT, in, in terms of other converters and things of that sort, is that it is going to use your system's tech executable. So it's all like, it, it, a simple way to think about it is that the system is really sort of tech packages and things that coexist with the tech executable. So Jason's question of you can't pull off some archaic package from uh, CTAN, it's actually the reverse. You can get some of those weird packages 
and if they're built on other fairly standard things, then Tech for HT is just going to handle it right out of the box. So that's a nice, a nice thing. Uh, and I'll talk some more about it. It's powerful, but it's also kind of finicky. Most of what's going on is happening right here. So I have not reinvented the wheel in that regard. There's about 5% more that needs to be done to take what was meant to be a web page and turn it into a Sage worksheet. I've traded on the Sage Tech syntax, and I would have liked to have had Dan Drake speak first, but he said, no, I'm going to be horribly jet lagged when I, I have just gotten off the plane from Korea. And so I'm going to steal a little bit of your thunder, and we'll see a little bit of Sage Tech. But that's Dan's package for integrating Sage into printed documents. And I'm recycling his syntax. So the, uh, that, that makes, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and actually a subset of that. But uh, in the demo I will do, we will do the whole Sage Tech drill before I start doing my conversions. And that's a little summary of, of what my conversion is. And that's just a Python script. So my contribution in, in terms of this project is one Python script <coughs> and then a configuration file for this tech for ht converter that makes a few things happen that my script will then recognize. And I'll show you all that stuff. Uh, I can make a single worksheet, and I've done this for presentations now, where I'm, if I'm going to give a presentation about Sage, I now author it in LaTeX, and I send it through this system, and I just get a single worksheet out, and that's what I would put up in front of the group. For a book-like thing, uh, Tech for HT will split at chapters or sections or whatever granularity you want. It will split it up. I make each of those a worksheet, put them all in a zip file, and it's really convenient. The notebook will suck in a whole zip file and unzip it and unzip all the worksheets and make them available. So that's what's going on there. Uh, a bonus of Sage Tech, one of the things that Sage Tech does is produce a few doc testable files. So if in my source I put the sage input commands and then I follow them with the output that I would expect, so I've got the input and then I, I, I run sage and I cut and paste to whatever I want to do, but I have the output that I think should happen. When I run sage tech as part of the process, there will be a file that just has those inputs and those outputs in a format that sage expects for testing. So the idea is that if every new release of Sage comes out, if I'm diligent and run that file through the new version of Sage, if somebody has, say, changed the linear algebra code, I'm going to recognize that and I can update the source of the book if I want. So I, I'm hoping this leads to reliability and not this problem of, say, the interacts we saw a while ago that I wrote that now have errors, not because I necessarily did anything wrong, but things have changed. Can you briefly tell me what not Right. So when we write uh, a new function, a new Python method or function, uh, Python use a triple, e quote, triple quoted string and, and development environments will pick that up and all that. But for Sage, we put a whole lot of stuff in there, and in, in inputs and outputs. And then we also put examples. And the examples are clearly marked as input lines, and then output lines follow. And you can run a single command in Sage and it will go through whatever subset of files or all of them you want. It will pick out all of those inputs, run them with whatever perturbed version of Sage you have, check the, the, the text output against the output you expect, and tell you if you, you're OK or not. So yeah, I guess unit testing is, is what that is. And if I use some words like that, then you're not familiar with it. We have different unit testing. So I'm not going to keep bouncing back and forth <coughs> in and out of presentation mode. Uh, so the source, so I already talked about the, the variety of packages you get and why that happens. Uh, you got to change your mindset a little bit. So when I look at other people's tech and they're trying to push something 5mm one way or the other, uh, that's not going to happen on a web page. Okay? So generally, uh, the tech for HT is just going to ignore it. But if you're trying to do something like some kind of crazy table or side by side somethings, that's not going to happen. Uh, this is just this is just an example of the kind of thing that goes on that I see a lot, and I've, I've just sort of made this up, and this is extreme. But people are in the middle of math, and they want a little text, so they use slash text, which is great. 
but then they bury the mathematics in it again, and then within the mathematics, they want another little bit of text. And, <laughs> and, and, and that will, you know, I think this is fine in regular old tech. This will, this will go okay. Tech for HT will, will give up on this and cause you some trouble. So that's what I mean. There's a, it's pretty much standard tech, but you just have to be careful about a few gotchas. Parentheses, and I'm not talking between the dollar signs, I'm just talking about you writing a, an English paper or something. Parentheses. If you've got one and you don't have the other, I think it's at the stage when it's creating the XML and you load it in your browser, your browser will complain that there's an unbalanced parentheses there. Nothing to do with tech necessarily. So no smileys. <laughs> yeah, that's right, no smileys unless you figure out somehow how to escape it. Yeah, exactly, with ampersands or some tricks like that. So when I say that my script just does a little bit of this and a little bit of that, then there are a whole bunch of little issues like that that need to be straightened up. So that's source. Uh, I've taken some material. I was visiting Chris Godsell at the University of Waterloo who does algebraic graph theory. And we have very similar research interests, but I just I discovered that we have very similar interests in publishing mathematics, which was a pleasant surprise. So just sort of as a demo, I've taken some of some things he showed me and, and changed them up a little bit. The things I want to point out to you are that these are really standard uh, tech packages that you may have used or probably have used there. Uh, Sage Tech, that's the Andrade's package. I'll talk about this command. I'm, I'm going to only include some, uh, include text output. I'll show you what result that has. Title, author, all that is the same. I'm going to come back to these edits, so just ignore that stuff for now. So this is, I, uh, Chris gave me two files that he had written as an experiment, and I'll show you the experiment. I put them together as if they were a two-section book or something like that. And the, and the mathematics is good. You can read through this. And there are places where I've added, I've made some changes. So he had the factorization of this integer in, in the text. You can see this 2 to the 6 times slash times 5. That's his original text. And I've used Dan Drake's Sage, pack, sage Tech package to put that slash sage right there. And then it's going to run the command that does the factorization. So that's a hint of what's saying. Now you have that include graphics. Couldn't you use Sage to create that graphic as well? Yes, except this is Chris's graphic. Exactly. Here's, here's what I'm doing, what I've been doing most of the year. So Sage example, again, is a Sage tech environment. The Sage colon. You know, the question about a doc string, the way we identify input strings is sage colon space, and you will see that at the command line if you ever work that way in sage. And so, on. so that's a real natural thing if you've got some experience with sage. So you see four input lines. The last one is to print this characteristic polynomial. That line without the sage colon, that's the expected output after those four input lines have run. And then there's a discriminant of the polynomial. That's the little d that's being printed out, that fairly large integer, and then a factorization of d in its output. So there are, are, are sort of three computations being done there. And that's a real nice example of what Chris Godsell and myself like about using Sage, and I think everybody else. You've got a construction of a graph. We're taking its complement, a graph operation. AM, I shouldn't have used the shorthand, adjacency matrix and then a characteristic polynomial, so there's some linear algebra. Discriminant, I don't know what you, that's algebra, I don't know what you call that, number theory or Galois theory or something. And then of course factorization is number so, theory, yeah. Uh, the, what's I, the purpose of the stage example in this case? You were saying that that's basically just a doc test uh, stage, that that's a comment? Like, stage example is, is Dan Drake's creation for his project. Right. And if you want to hit the printed page, Yes. That's a way of saying there's there's some stuff that I would like to print right. as instruction perhaps for somebody else about Sage in a printed page. Okay, and the Sage. The sage I'm goes. going I'm going to worksheets and I want live cells. Right, I see. And and, and I'm all about one source, many outputs. Right. So, so that's why I'm, that's why I'm building on, on Dan's syntax. I'm yeah, it's, uh, why do you need to John, thumbs up first. Okay. Sage example basically takes what comes next and just prints it as if it was like verbatim text or something. Yes, like exactly. That, as if it was source code. Um, and I will show sage you that. silent. I'm, I'm going to show you that output. Yeah, okay. Sage and silent. I, I know. I what is sage that. silent? It will execute, but nobody will see it. Yeah, right. It's a computer. It's a you, want, you want to compute something that you might use later on. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. 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 There'll be more details tomorrow. So right there, say it's not calculating anything. You're typing the output for the point carries a phenomenon by yourself. Right. It's not calculating. So if I'm in, if I'm writing this source file, I write those four saves lines, and then my the way I work, I highlight them and I drag and drop them in my terminal window that has saved running. Right. And they all run, okay. and then out comes x to the six minus ten, so on, and then and then I just highlight that and I drag that back in my editor and drop it in place. But it will be doc testable, quote doc testable, two years from now, if, and it, it should stay the same. Is there, a, is there a mode to have to automatically update the outputs? Like the CG Next mode lets you automatically update the outputs. I think. So that the really? the, 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 reg, the regular behavior okay. of Sage Tech and Dan can correct me, but Sage Tech is mostly oriented towards you put in the input and let's let Sage compute it for us and put in the stuff. Right. Okay. I want to put what I think the answer is. Right. So that when Sage changes in six months, I catch it with the The point here is, okay. Yeah, so Sage Emacs, I think for updating doc tests, you can say, okay, now I'm going into a special mode where I'm going to trust you and now run everything and it'll automatically do all that copying of the output, et cetera, in there. And then, but I guess, yeah, it's a different issue because Sage Tech takes this and formats something when you get the output and you don't necessarily modify it at that time. So there's some discussion of the complement of P6 in this. And, and here I'm defining that graph or building it or whatever you want to say. And then Sage plot is, is one of the great things about Sage Tech is that it, it will make a plot and then just embed it into your output rather than you don't need the slashing for the graphics, which is what Carl the earlier one did earlier, right, Carl? Okay, that's sort of it for a source. So uh, if you want to, go check your email. I'm going to do PDF LaTeX just like you would do normally. This is not my stuff, okay? But I want the Sage Tech. I want Sage Tech to run. So I want to do that factorization, and I want to plot that graph. So this is this is straight ahead regular stuff, and it's going to be a run of PDF LaTeX, then a run of Sage, and then a run of PDF LaTeX, and that's always sort of a three-step process like that. So. Uh, I can't type while people are watching. So I've got well, all close the our eyes. I need. What? Everybody close their eyes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can if I get a tab on. PDF LaTeX, and there's nothing too fancy there except you get a little bit of warning if you're if you're new to this that you need to run Sage on discriminant.sagetech.sage. So part of the Sage Tech process has produced this. And if people will remind me as I go, we can keep an eye on the directory there. So uh, all that was in here when I started was the discriminant.tech. That was the only file in there right now. So you're starting to get some of these uh, Sage Tech. Output there, and I'll come back to the doc test in a minute. Yes. So, is this something like like bid tech get from like two or three? Times? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So same thing here. Yeah. Exactly. But, but so this file right here is in Dan. Correct me if I'm. That's that's Sage and that's that's commands already to give to Sage to process. That's been sort of pulled out of the, the source. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll come back to the doc testable file because I want to show you that. So this was the command that I. Copied. And there's not a whole lot there because there's not a whole lot of stuff work for Sage to do, but that's the output you would expect down in here about having done a couple of formulas or something of that sort. And then you PDF LaTeX again. So John, there's your that's your sort of whole trip there. Now now the output, and it's been hit with Sage's LaTeX command, is sitting in some other file. So let's go and look. We should have a few more Sage Techisms. Uh, S command, S out. One of those has the, the pieces that need to go back into my document as the result of a Sage computation and then pumping it through Sage's LaTeX command that's an expectation that everything has a nice representation. So we're ready to PDF LaTeX again. Okay. Now I can 
take a look. Uh, I, sh I should have showed you that. I should have showed you, showed you what the PDF looked like after the first run, but that's okay. All right, so this is all pretty standard, and, and the math looks good and so on. That graphic is one that Chris built with Sage. He's a big Sage user, but that is just a PNG that I pulled off of, off of his server. There's, there's something that's a little bit different, that 2 to the 6, dot 5, and so on, that is the factorization that Sage did. The source code that I got from Chris had the slash times. Sage's LaTeX representation of a factorization has a C dot in there. So that's why you're getting the dot. So that's just to convince you that that was computed and that's, made its way back in. Yeah, that's weird because the next line has the slash times. Right, yeah, yeah well, that's, I didn't mess with that. Right. Just, I'm sort of doing the minimum to get a demo sure. going here. Uh, that's another one of Chris's graphics, another one of the graphs that was of interest to him. Here's the Sage example. Okay, so the the input lines are you know in this TT font. Uh, I I've lost it, but I once hacked Sage Tech to take out the spacing there. I'd rather that was tightened up, if for nothing else, in the same paper. But I'd rather those things were tight. Uh, the option I showed you to print text output, that produced this polynomial right here in the way you would expect to see it in a Sage notebook or at uh, the command line. This is what uh, the person that wrote Sage example was sort of interested in, was to take the output, latex it, center it, and make it look nice. That does not always work. There are some, there are some pretty standard things you can do in Sage that when you hit them with latex and all, it, it causes your PDF LaTeX run to fail. And I don't want to see this either. I don't want the mathematics. I'm trying to teach Sage in, in these instances. I mean, I'm obviously trying to teach mathematics, but that's back in the paragraphs in places like that. So this, this I would like to change a little bit. Or have Dan change for me. Okay, complement of P6. Yes, yes, yes um, sorry. Hey, it's also safe. Maybe it's a different question too. But so you were talking about the spacing of the yeah. Um, the sage tech, if, if I don't change the sage tech, will it uh, automatically rerun sage tech on these pieces? The answer is no. Unless you're using a system that is automatically doing those things for you. So, so for example, if, if I run it once and then I have the sage out, then I go back and so I want to take out the big sketch for the so yeah, the computations probably don't need to be rerun. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and if you do a big book or something like that, I think you want to make a file or something that, that puts everything in a temporary directory and keeps track of what's been touched and what hasn't. On, on the tech shop implementation, you say, well, we rerun the sage okay. computation unless it's been changed. Yeah, and that's going to vary depending on whether you're Command line or tech shop or that, tech that center or whatever you're doing. Tech shop yep. Okay. okay, so here's the complement of P6 plotted with a circular layout. So if you look around the edge there, you will see the missing edges, and the edge from 0 to 5 is the complement joining the two ends there. And that is the graph built by Sage, the plot built by Sage, Sage Tech grabbing that plot, putting it someplace, inserting it with include graphics or whatever is used. That's all the magic of, of Sage Tech there. And I should probably point out, there's a new folder here, Sage Plots for Discriminant Dot Tech. So that's where that stuff is living. Uh, let's go back to my PDF. And I, I didn't do anything with Section 2 other than to have a Section 2. So there's nothing, there's nothing to see here. We'll go on. Okay, questions about that? PDF version before it goes away. Yeah. If you had, oh, no, that's okay. Uh, I don't think you'll need that. If you wanted nicer pictures of graphs, could you use the TKC yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. I don't think that would be any problem. Mm -hmm. Although it might not, you might just totally bypass Sage. But I don't know. Oh, no, you can use Sage, you can use Sage to generate TKC graphs. Yes. You can. Oh. Right. And yeah, yeah. Call yeah. It. And then just okay. call, put it in TKC. Yeah, I guess we just, I guess we just want that out with the code. Yeah, so I think we would just put that in a slash sage or something. Yeah, I, don't I have some examples. Okay, that I read. Okay, you've done you that. actually. Okay, so 
So let me go back to my, my presentations. On that. I'm going to run tech for HT in a minute. I guess I should do the doc testing. So let's do that. There's, a, there's the doc testable file that was produced. So if you've done any, any Sage development or if you've ever looked in the source, every function has this triply quoted string that has input and output and, and examples and all that kind of stuff. And you'll recognize that same format. We would usually say example in big letters and then a double colon to say uh, verbatim text. And we would write our examples. And that's all being written, written for me there and, and pretty much just copied straight out of source so I can where did that go there it is so so that's my sage executable I just have a copy for this presentation it's called books instead of sage point four point seven Dot .t for testing, and that's the file I just showed you, and and that's the uh, the equivalent of WebWorks green bar. All test pass. It's that thing, right? All test pass. That's the image of a Facebook page. All test pass. That's the good deal. All right. Color is color is green. <laughs> it's amazing how much difference it makes. <laughs> we took it out briefly, and we actually got complaints. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to show you Tech for HT. I've already told you how great it is because it, it runs on the executables. It's a really complicated system, and uh, David Cervone, who was here, Cervone was here earlier and just went home, uh, referred to himself as the one guy in his office being careful not to be hit by the pie truck. Uh, the author of Tech for HT, I think, might have been a bicycle accident. I'm not sure what happened, but, but he, he died a year and a half or two ago, and it was sort of the point was it was a one man project. Uh, there is an outfit in India, I believe, that's doing some kind of publishing or something, like technical publishing, and they sort of picked it up. And, and email, like one email I got from those folks when I was reporting bugs was, our livelihood depends on this. So I think there is sort of some maintain, maintaining going on, but it's not clear what the future of tech range to is. Uh, I'm going to show you the output, so, and, and you'll, you'll jump back and, or, let me see that. Let's look at what's okay. Command. So this, I'm going to, yeah, okay. so HT for the tech is a script as part of tech for HT. Same source. Here's, here's part of what I'm doing is a custom configuration file, and I think maybe I should show you that. So this is a configuration file for Tech for HT. And I've had a lot of help with this from people like Dan Drake and especially Robert Merrick has been interested in this. And the this is sort of the big this is this is the thing that this, it's hard to tell what's going on here, and I'm not sure I, I totally understand this myself. But this is creating a new environment, and what that environment is going to do is it's going to put a Sage XML tag that I just made up, and it, it's temporary, not part of not going to any standard or anything like that. A Sage tag, and then it's twin, the, the slash Sage. Okay. So when, when Tech for HT runs on the source I showed you, when it sees a Sage example, it's not going to do Sage tech stuff on it because I've redefined all of Dan's environments. And it's mostly just going to spit out a Sage slash Sage. And those are just markers for me to pick up later. So that's that's an integral part of what's going on. So there's the command. There's a little bit of font information and all that kind of 
of stuff. So this is uh, John. This is a three-pass process to do tech for HT, but it does does all three for you. That's font information. The square brackets that look like pages in tech, those are like paragraphs or something. It's, it's smaller subsections. Let me show you one thing. The sage plot convert part of the image magic uh, distribution or whatever. It got trimmed, and basically what happened is it got dumbed down to sort of web density. So not 72 p points per inch, but 110. And, and some names are being renamed. There's a little, and I know how to turn that off, because normally I don't want that to happen. There was a question. Yeah, so um, I, I've been trying, you know, I've been trying to yeah, work yeah. with your thing, and now that I'm here and you're doing the talk, I thought I'd start trying to convert those works, those uh, tech files that came from SWS to tech yeah. and go back. And um, they, uh, the less than signs are staying less than signs in the HTML. And that's bad because then, then your script, which we'll probably talk about next, is giving me all kinds of, you know, malformed, even yeah. opening a text wrangler gives a malformed. Yeah. Problem because there's less than signs that aren't. So I, I mean, right. is there I don't think I, just, I don't think I usually there? have that problem. So we'll look at, we'll okay, look okay. at what you've got there. But, uh, there's a bunch more files in here now. So look, uh, you got, everybody knows probably what a DVI is, an IDV. Tech for HT actually creates a DVI file, but it's got extra junk buried in it. So that's what the text executables are producing. There's the PNG that is the sage plot uh, picture. We can look at that if we wanted to. But these two down at the bottom are the most important things. So I've said break this up by sections as if it was a large book with lots of sections. So the original file was discriminate, and there's a section one and a section two. And those are HTML. The other thing that's interesting is that there's a CSS file that's been produced that's doing a lot of this style. So, um, let's go let's So this is tech for ht output. And, I'm going to go to the top. A bunch of header stuff. You'll see the JS math routines in there. I'm going to get rid of all that stuff at the top. Uh, I'm gonna, I am going to try and pull out the title up here, some, some pieces of information of that sort. But uh, this is where the math is down in here. Uh, the thetas are actually being written as Unicode characters, and I think my editor is rendering them as, as thetas instead of X5723 or whatever they are. This is one of the goofball things that Tech for HT does for you. Every now and then you get two lines of 40 spaces and a couple of blank lines in between which is no problem in HTML, but when that shows up in the middle of my verbatim tech, it stays there and it's it's in the way. So I gotta find all those and pick those out. Why are they there? Pardon me? Why are they there? I do not know if it's a bug or a feature. <laughs> I have no idea. And I can't ask the author, so, you know, so, so I, don't, I don't know. It's a it's a feature, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tech yeah. has a bunch of features. You'll see this is, <laughs> this is a bug I've discovered. I think it's my fault uh, in the course of doing this, but there's the, there's the factorization to Sage Tech, and Dan could probably tell me why that's there, but that's just something I discovered putting this together. There's a Sage tag and a slash Sage tag, and there's all the stuff you typed in. This is a quick and dirty hack for me that I have never in the last six months gotten around to fixing, and I thought I was going to do it this week, and I only got to fix it this week. That's just a marker for me that that's a Sage example, so that's not going to be there. I'm going to do something, something different or be more careful. But anyway. There's all, the, there's all the Sage input and output. And what I have to do with my Python script is pick that out and put it in the right wrappers for a worksheet to see. Almost there. Any questions on what that stuff looks like? That's, that's the nasty HTML with JS math that no human really wants to look at. This is my script. Don't blink. So it's just Python. Uh, Python's got an XML parser, whatever you want to call it. It reads all that XML stuff, and Carl's is probably choking at that stage because it's not right. valid XML, and it just craps out on you. So these are only so that I can figure out which file it crapped out on. Uh, it has made, if we go back and look at the, it has made discriminate.zip. <laughs> So 
if I unzip and just peek at discriminant.zip, it has three SWS files in it. So the, so the discriminant.sws will be like a table of contents. That's going to be my, my main top level whatever for the book. And then I've got the two separate worksheets for the two places. So now I want to go back. So now I'm in my Sage notebook. So, okay, so if you've been done checking your email, now we're going to look at the end result of all this. I am going to browse to that zip file. And it's down in demo. So I always have to tell people, don't unzip it. The worksheet will unzip it. Okay. So I built them out of order so that when they get sucked into the notebook, they're in order or something approximating in order. So there's my table of contents. There's my title. There's all that information coming through. Feature request. Maybe I should offer a bounty. Uh, links between worksheets that I can predict ahead of time. Of most money, maybe. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, so the, the, those links between worksheets are not active. Links within a worksheet are active. So there's the mathematics. There's the PNG that Chris Godsell made. There's the dot factorization that Sage Tech made. So that's static now, right? Sage Tech. Yeah. So that's pre-computed now. Yeah, nothing right about that. Really. So let's see that that cell one. This, this one? No. Not the one with the C data, because that's a bug. That shouldn't even be there. I was, okay, I was wondering what the C data was. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a bug discovered in, in putting it all together for this demonstration. There's another PNG from Chris Godsell. Yeah, I will execute these for you. Okay. So these are commands that I added to Chris's text that he'd sent me. This stuff. Now, all it's going to do is show you the output I pre-computed, I hope. Not even pre-computed, just paste it in. And then I can do the discriminant. And then I can do the factor. And you know, and this is what I, you know, what a student might do. What perhaps what what happens if we change the to a path on seven vertices, we of course get a seventh degree polynomial, we get a larger integer, and I don't know what Chris is interested in about these factorizations, but there it is. That should be hidden, and that C data shouldn't be there either. Again, this is my interaction with Sage Tech. There is the complement of the path on six vertices that Sage built, Sage constructed the plot, Sage Tech extracted it, made it include graphics, all that good stuff. Tech for HT, I showed you some of that convert and all that. It's sort of downsized it, shrunk it, done it at a resolution that's a, a little more accommodating for the web. So that's why that is, is looking a little smaller. Then so updated the data directory, I assume. That's where I stuffed it. I think that's, yeah, I go through and I find all the, the images that are laying around and stuff about, including this and the CSS, that's where the CSS goes. And next, um, that doesn't work. This, this Probably not to another work. It would take me to the top. No, I guess not. Yeah, it's part of the yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to go to another worksheet. I thought maybe it would take it, me to the top. Another, um, yes, yeah. but that's not good. That's not good. Okay. Back to presentation. So I'm close to done where we just did that. So as far as my project goes, I, I hope I've convinced you pretty much it's working. It needs some polish. I've got notes and things. I, I need to make an author's guide. I need to tell people so that are writing the tech that your parentheses need to be balanced. You can't put a, a text inside of a math inside of a text inside of a math. Uh, don't do H space three and a half inches. I need to, to sort of provide that guidance for anybody who might want to want to start from scratch with this. Uh, so what have I done? So Tom Judson's abstract algebra book was on the list of projects for this year. And then in uh, early December or sometime when I, when I came back from a trip, I'm teaching that course in the spring, so I got on my horse and, and put as much abstract algebra as I could into his book because he was teaching the material this spring, and I tried to stay ahead of him. But it's basically done. So it's got all the content 
for groups and rings and fields and lattices, and, and I need to do one more thing with finite abelian groups, and that stuff is missing from what I would like to do sage-wise in the book. So that's our poster child. I'm about 80% of the way through my own book, so I think I sort of want to tackle eigenvalues next and maybe clean up some inconsistencies there, and that will be done. Uh, there's a group in France that has written an interesting book about SAGE, not so much for students, I don't think, but maybe sort of for, for people that know a fair amount of mathematics already, but it's really nice in a lot of different areas, and the people that have written them are, are experts in those areas. Uh, but in terms of going through and cleaning up their tech, there's like eight or ten authors. So my son plays on a tennis team at, at his high school, and they win every match all the time. And they send several doubles teams to districts, and they go to state. And there's always one doubles team that doesn't do very well in district. And you don't want to be that doubles team, because at the team banquet, the coach stands up there and says, we played 32 high schools, and we beat them all. We played 500 matches, and we won them all. We played 2,000 sets, and we won them all. I'm exaggerating. And then he talks about the team that lost in districts, and, and they gained valuable experience. <laughs> Converting, the, converting this French book, I gained valuable experience. <laughs> uh, and, and it was not bad. It was just every chapter was different. I just couldn't do a, you know, a big global search and replace. Every chapter, I had to sort of start over and, and see what things people were doing. Uh, in contrast, William dumps all of his stuff in one big, huge file, and any inconsistencies he might have, and there are very few, you can just fix them all at once. And so William's stuff is great. I've been through his elementary number theory once, and Hope we're going to do that maybe in the next couple of months. Uh, he's probably just finished this semester the, this book that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah right. Needs yeah, a little polish. Yeah, it needs a little polish. Okay. <laughs> but that would be a great one, I think, to hit in terms of the worksheets. Uh, like I said, I was visiting Chris Godsell. He's got a great collection of notes about algebraic graph theory, so it's kind of advanced material, not really undergraduate stuff. Yeah. But he's game to have that done. Uh, Carl Dieter is, is poking around on a number theory text. He doesn't want anybody to know about it, but now it's on YouTube. So that's skunk work stuff. Uh, and like I said before, I've done some individual presentations. So I want to do one experiment here live and just see what happens. This is what uh, Chris Godsell gave me originally. Okay. So this is what was the first quote chapter of what I was showing you. So he has written, I mean, sure he's cut and pasted from places you can see, but he has written MathJax and HTML by hand. He just sort of said, I'm just going to start from scratch and I want to build, you know, the web is my only target. And this is all MathJax configuration information here. And this is a little bit of CSS that he's written to get nice little headings. And here is his text. And if you look through this, this will look like what I was just showing you, although I subjected it to a little bit of editing. So MathJax likes slash parentheses, I put dollar signs, different things of that sort. So this is what Chris originally sent me and I subjected it to some editing. I'm going to do that for later. Why does he decide that the web is its primary format? I'm just curious. I think for some of the same reasons I have. So you know, people look to my linear algebra book, know it's really long, and I, I sort of, my attitude originally was to throw everything but the kitchen sink into the book. But now when you go on print on demand, you're bigger than the binding size. And people pick up your book and say, "My God, I can't cover this in a semester." Right, Jane? No, you can do it. I've done it. It's many a thousand times. pages. I'm not exactly the PDF is a thousand pages. The binding on the book is limited to 740 pages, so I trimmed for that. Yeah. Okay. But, um, so at some at some point, uh, when do I break a, an equation? Well, my rule is if at 12 point it doesn't fit in seven and a half inches, I got to break it. That's a concession to the printed page that I don't need to make for the web. Now, the minute I'm putting text stuff, so Tom's book, we've, we've sort of kept the content and the, and the sage stuff a little bit disjoint. My book is one big experiment. I put it in as I need it. 
now I just made it longer. I just made the problem worse. And why do I want to print a bunch of stuff with Sage that I don't think you're curling up with on the couch you're at your computer with? So now the flip side that we've had these discussions about tenure and review and people's perceptions of things. People love to see, oh, it's a real book. They love to see a printed book they can hold on to. And students. And, and, student, and students still do, you know, don't buy any of this. Uh, today's generation of students is all digital. They've grown up with screens. They still want books. And Tom's book is 400 pages, print on demand, list for 1995 on Amazon. They're discounting it to 1870 or something like that. It's hardcover. And, it, <laughs> and it's hardcover. You know, and, and part of the success of Tom's book is that it is a real book. You know, so and, and I scare people like Jane. You know, it's my students actually this spring that I put it online. Okay, okay, put it in a Sage worksheet. Told them they could get the book if they wanted to. They went out and bought the book. They right. didn't have to. Right. They want the book. But of course, of course, at, at eighteen or nineteen dollars, they yeah. say, "Well, this, yeah, is, right. and then, this yeah. is a pizza and a beer or something." You know. So anyway, I, I'm just sort of getting less enamored of, of trying to maintain a print version of things I do. And I think that's what Chris is as well. Wait, so this just contradicts Tom was saying people want the print. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is open source. I don't have to give them what they want. Well, <laughs> I actually think that the, the iPad tablet type things and so on may change this. That's part of what I'm Dramatically in a couple yes. of years. That's part of my I've thinking. Actually I've never really liked reading on screen very much, but I've actually started using PDF stuff with these on my tablet. Uh, so I've got bigger than a phone, smaller than an iPad. Right. And, and, and I've had this for maybe five or six months. Yeah. And, and I love it. You yeah. know, I, it, it's, it's great. So, so I, I, and, I, and I can read Tom's book on this. Yeah. Except when I want to open up a tiny MCE editor, I don't know how to shift click. This hook click doesn't <laughs> work for me on this. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the Justice Department has been coming down on universities that require like hands-on e reader for certain things because it violates the Americans with Disabilities Act. Right. Mm. So you have to be a little careful. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, so I've had I had one email from I think an advocacy oh, organization. I, I was surprised to read it. I'm just reporting what Okay, so so if if you if you were here the last couple of days and you saw the math jack stuff, uh, you can hover on the equations and you can make that you can make a default setting that they get pretty darn big right there on your screen. You know, I, I don't know if that satisfies all whatever the title is. I think, I think, it, was, that's, I think it was matter of lines. Okay, so so I, I should mention the Tech for HT project when I first I think sort of got interested in it. The original goal I think was to take tech turn it into something representable, and then take the representable and turn it into Braille. And, I, and I've never quite gotten all the pieces together to make it work, but Tech for HT is supposed to produce some format that you can then feed to another program and get audio. My, my PDF of my book is readable in Adobe. It, Adobe will read it to you until it gets to a matrix. You know. So, so it, it, I would... I would like to make that a piece of what I've sort of gotten off on this Sage thing. But another direction I'd like to go is 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 to do something with because you can do that I think with the free books and the electronic books that maybe won't be so easy with this version. Yeah. What about um, or I guess uh, is there any uh, end goal to have interactive um, like the, the, I was noticing the calculus speaker or the multivariable calculus yeah. speaker had interactive. Yeah. means yeah, in the you're allowed to do that with these websites and well, with, with this with, tech conversion. With what I'm doing it is and I just don't I just didn't include that in the demo. But <laughs> you can just slam an interact into the